Welcome to the NTN Nightly. I'm Nisha Charles. This edition's top stories. The Ministry of Infrastructure to address traffic congestion and cash trees. Several St. Lucia hotels rank among the top 50 resorts in the Caribbean. St. Lucians called upon to emulate the spirit of the Independence Monument. All that plus the latest in youth development, sports, and the NTN Nouvelle Arcoyol. The Ministry of Infrastructure, Ports, Energy and Labour is working feverishly on plans to address traffic congestion in key areas in the capital city. The plans form part of the government's wider road rehabilitation program. Janelle Norville has details. The Ministry of Infrastructure, Ports, Energy and Labour is continuing with plans aimed at reducing the traffic congestion on the nation's roads and ensuring safer roads for the motoring public and the country by large. Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Infrastructure, Ports, Energy and Labour, Ivor Danielle, explained that the Ministry is exploring the construction of new roundabouts, including one to be constructed in Broadly Bay. He added that the non-operational traffic lights will also be addressed. The Marisil traffic light, for example, has been done for a while. I recall when they first went out, having a conversation about whether you can just turn it on, I would advise it does not work this way. And so you, the level of traffic has improved, has increased. Um, so, Marisley, we've designed in a roundabout. Castries, the city of Castries, we've now working with the World Bank, and I think we've gotten, we've received a no objection to negotiate with the the supplier um, out of Trinidad, who's representing the manufacturer of the lights, to get two systems: one for Bridge Street, Jeremy Street and the John Compton Highway, Jeremy Street, I hope I have it correct. These are the two. And we have some additional four lights that we will be using, utilizing the very same specs to procure. Um, and I'm hoping that I can get them the, the place lit before Christmas. Highlighting the importance of road safety, the Permanent Secretary indicated that the Ministry would be taking advantage of the UN's Decade of Action for Road Safety 2011 to 2020. The 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development recognizes that road safety is a prerequisite to ensuring healthy lives, promoting well-being, and making cities inclusive, safe, resilient, and sustainable. The Decade of Action for Road Safety 2011-2020, officially proclaimed by the UN General Assembly in March 2010, seeks to save millions of lives by building road safety management capacity, improving the safety of road infrastructure, further developing the safety of vehicles, enhancing the behavior of road users, and improving post-crash response. Guided by the Global Plan, the Decade of Action offers a framework for policy, practice and advocacy to help countries achieve the Sustainable Development Goals. So we started our efforts with putting in crash barriers. We've, we've done a lot of signage right around the country. And you would see, and particularly at night, you would see them reflecting. Um, tells you um, sharp corners and all of those, those um, and helping bends and, and even chevrons. So we, we continue in this. We will continue to, to procure guardrails and install them in as many areas as possible. And what we need now is to work on driver behavior. And with the behavior comes speed. And there are manuals that have been developed for speed that we don't even have to reinvent the wheel when it comes to that. Because the higher your speed, the higher the probability of death. And you do not want death, you do not want crashes, because it puts a major burden on your health sector. If you go to the, the I mean, World Health Organization and you see the statistics on St. Lucia in terms of, of, of road accidents and so on, or even look at it worldwide, you would realize that it's become a health scourge, that accidents and crashes, that's, I mean, more people die, they say, from crashes than, than even uh, a murder. So there is, one life is too much, so we definitely have to move into action and move into action now. The entire road improvement project is expected to be completed over a period of two and a half years. For the Government Information Service, I am Janelle Norville. Condé Nast Traveller has announced the results of its annual Reader's Choice Awards, with St. Lucia recognized as the number eight island in the Caribbean and Atlantic, while seven resorts in the destination were named in the top 50 resorts in the Caribbean Islands list. 
resorts earning a spot on the top 50 resorts in the Caribbean islands list include Jane Mountain at number 15, Sugar Beats, a Viceroy Resort 17, Cap Maison at number 20, and Chastney Resort is in the 27th spot, Ladera Resort 33, the Landings Resort and Spa comes in at number 34, and the Rendezvous Resort is at 49. The Condé Nast Traveler Reader's Choice Awards are the longest running and most prestigious recognition of excellence in the travel industry and are commonly known as the best of the best of travel. St. Lucia is experiencing a record year for tourism arrivals and has several new tourism developments in the pipeline. The Royal St. Lucia Turf Club Horse Racing and Entertainment Complex will debut this December. Several hotels and resorts are unveiling major refurbishments. New local restaurants are expanding visitors' dining options and infrastructure improvements, such as a new airport, are underway. The Ministry of Health and Wellness has completed its review of the impact of the U.S. Naval Ship Comfort medical mission in St. Lucia. The United States Naval Ship Comfort led its humanitarian mission to St. Lucia from September 23 to October 2, 2019, where over 5,000 patients were attended to free of charge. General services included basic evaluation and treatment, preventative medicine, dental screening and treatment, eye care, pediatrics, dermatology, and surgical care. Apart from the services offered to patients, the crew imparted knowledge and skills to local practitioners. Medical Officer of Health Dr. Sharon Belma George elaborated on the activities. Other activities also occurred in the different communities during the, the, the tenure in which the ship was here in St. Lucia, including the training of medical teams and a nursing exchange program, collaboration with the Environmental Health Department, community activities with the Holy Family Citizens Home, engagements with the Babano and Enchipo schools, community engagements at the Grosile Human Resource Center, the Red Cross Project at Olio Denry. Although patients were not able to go onto the ship for two days due to sea swells, Dr. Belma George says the turnout was impressive. In the outpatient services, that's the clinics which were held at the National Cultural Center and the OKEU Hospital, a total of 4,846 patients were seen. And this includes adult medicine, pediatric medicine, dental and optometry. In terms of surgical procedures, we saw a total of 79 surgeries. Um, which included ophthalmology, plastic surgery, maxillofacial surgery, dental surgery, pediatrics, urology, interventional radiology as well. And we did a total of 48 echocardiograms and 40 CT scans. Deputy Permanent Secretary in the Department of External Affairs, Irene Gasper, is grateful for the collaboration which made the mission possible, including the conduct of those seeking medical care level of cooperation that we got from the general public that is phenomenal that was really really good in the sense where persons were turned away and took it just as it was said our officers were being as honest as they possibly could were very empathetic but they did not have a choice but to turn persons away and persons as much as they needed the care and really wanted to get in understood when the health officials said the quota is up and we are not able to take any more. The visit of the USNS Comfort was part of the ship's five-month deployment to Latin America and the Caribbean on a medical assistance mission. Denusha is steadily increasing its rank on the Henley & Partners OECS fourth water ranking, standing at third in the OECS and 31st on the global front. The OECS island boasts visa-free or visa-on-arrival access to 145 destinations, increasing its score by one destination since the third quarter earlier this year. In 2018, St. Lucia scored 146, ranking 31 on the global rank. The Caribbean island has seen a change in rank of 7 from 2009 to 2019. Commenting on the achievement, managing partner of Henley and partner St. Lucia Mark Mirage states that Henley & Partners continues to work closely with the Citizen Dubai Investment Unit to ensure that both St. Lucian citizens and prospective passport holders benefit from this program. 
The Henley Passport Index is the original ranking of all the world's passports according to, among other things, the number of destinations their holders can access without a prior visa. The ranking is based on exclusive data from the International Air Transport Association, which maintains the world's largest and most accurate database of travel information. Relief efforts are continuing in the Bahamas, where thousands of nationals remain homeless in the aftermath of Hurricane Dorian. The sunking English Francis of CARICOM News Time has an update. The government of the Bahamas is moving to ensure the future socio-economic sustainability of Grand Bahama and Abaco, according to the country's Minister of Social Services and Urban Development, the Honorable Frankie Campbell. He was speaking on Wednesday, the 9th of October, to security and aid personnel that have been on the ground in Marsh Harbor, the formerly picturesque main town on Abaco. He said while the road to recovery may appear slow, significant coordination among national, regional and international experts are ongoing to quicken the pace. The minister said cleanup of impacted areas in the aftermath of Dorian is a priority towards that process, as is restoration of housing and commerce. He said the longer Abaco and Grand Bahama remain inactive economically, the Bahamas will be losing at least 20% of its economy. And this is the NTN Nightly. Ryan O'Brien is up next. I am a child. I am HIV positive. I am a Muslim. I'm a journalist. I am gay. I am a political activist. I am differently able. I am Chinese. And me, I'm a little plus size. The first step toward change is awareness. The second step is acceptance of individuality and differences within all of us. A message brought to you by the Department of Health and Wellness. Welcome back. We join Ryan O'Brien for the latest happenings in youth development and sport. Thanks, Misha. Welcome everyone to your update from the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports on the NTN Nightly News. I'm Ryan O'Brien. Coach of the Moshi Primary School football team, Rande Polion, has commended his players despite finishing runners-up in the District 1 primary schools football competition which ended recently at the Saab playing field. Well, the competition was a very good one. We had some very skillful teams, some very skillful players. Um, the level was, I would say, admirable because um, even in the finals we had uh, two good teams playing but Grosley came out on top. I was part of my team though. Grosley emerged champions of the district. Youth workers attached to the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports made presentations to administrators of the ministry on work that has been ongoing in the various communities in which they have been deployed. Giovanni Charles is a youth worker assigned to South Castries. Um, yes, I was very confident in what I was able to offer. The presentation went really well. Um, what I dived into was really the collaborations that I was able to foster within the communities. And I went ahead and mentioned the future activities that I would be hosting. And of course, it has a lot to do with community development and, of course, a lot of partners involved because collaboration is the way forward for me so that's basically what my presentation was about. Charles identified one of the initiatives that has been welcomed by residents of South Castries. I think one of the more memorable ones would have been Fit for Life um, hosted at the Goodlands Worship Centre. Um, we were able to get 
over 275 persons to come through and go through um, medical services for free. Um, we're talking eye care, dental care, um, massage therapy, checking your vitals, high blood pressure and so on. Um, also giving toys to um, students and also stationery, going back to school, free haircuts and the mobile clinic that um, Dr. Bird and Dr. Stephen King have around, they, they were present as well. So the opportunity for young persons to see a pediatrician for free. So that event, Fit for Life, we had so many collaborators, um, Ministry of Health, Digicel, Blue Waters, um, Kendall Eugene as an um, individual himself, and just a lot more that I could mention, just not at the top of my head right now, but it was really an amazing activity. The Youth Worker Initiative is another concept adopted by the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports to enable young persons to become more involved in the development of their communities. And that's your segment from Youth Development and Sports for today. I'm Ryan O'Brien. Thanks, Ryan. Internationally renowned sculptor Jalim Yudovic says he's humbled by the opportunity afforded him to create a monument for the 40th anniversary of St. Lucia's independence. However, Yudovic, who now works extensively in China, hopes that all St. Lucians would be inspired by the work of art and apply its meaning to all aspects of their lives. His Anissi Antoine. The sculpture, which was designed by world-renowned sculptor Jalim Yudovic, was originally called Le Peche and formed part of Yudovic's Kudme exhibition in 2010. Yurovic explained that the definition of Kudme being the collective strength of the indigenous communities aligns with the theme for this year's independence, All In. When the opportunity come along for me to speak of my people and to speak of the entire history of my uh, people, to speak to our destiny, where, where, where we're going, how do we project ourselves, you know, and where we are um, as a nation at 40 years, you know, I was extremely humble. I was extremely humble and, 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 and it, was, it was something that I had to delve deep into my soul, um, do some of the law introspection and had to ask myself, who am I as a solution and what is my place in the world? So the discovery of my people was also the discovery of myself as well. And um, ultimately it has manifested itself in the sculpture that you now see behind you. Prime Minister of St. Lucia, Honorable Alan Chastney, expressed contentment in the level of work executed by the young, talented St. Lucian sculptor, Charlie Murovic. As I said, when everybody's passing by here, I want them to think of what we've achieved in the last 40 years as a country. And so we did that by working together. And simultaneously, what this also does is represents the future. We have a tremendous amount of challenges between climate change, social ills, economic um, uh, uh, opportunities, and we have to work together as a country. We all have to be all in, and I, and I could not think of a better way to symbolize that than this monument. The all-in monument stands at 12 feet 6 inches tall, overlooking the harbour on the Castries waterfront. From the Government Information Service, I am Anisia Antoine reporting. And stay with the NTN Nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson is here with the NTN Nouvelle Arqueo. The problem starts with finding a suitable spot. It extends to double parking. Offloading zones are ignored, thus inconveniencing commercial activity. Handicapped spots are occupied by drivers who use the quick errand excuse. And of course, there's the constant fear of parking tickets. In an effort to curb these and other parking-related issues, the Castry City Council will be implementing short-term paid parking. $3 an hour can save you $500 in parking tickets. Short-term paid parking, coming soon. Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle Arqueo. Monsieur Ta Nisha, Monsieur Madame du Batman, qui n'est pas responsable pour information à gouvernement cette ci à CGIS, à sa bébé télévision nationale, puis à NTN, Caposoto Nouvelle Arqueo, Monsieur Ta 
Primus Hutchinson. C'est aussi qu'après la même direction, et puis l'autre pays en la terre, particulièrement, c'est ça qui en chemin de développement pour embrasser l'initiative de investissement direct par le pays étrangers. C'est une initiative qui a gonflé rapidement au niveau de la terre, c'est juste ça là. Et puis, si pour Invest Saint Louis, le pays s'est déjà placé en route pour happer pas à investissement ça là. Mais, le ministre de l'Ici, on va aller en chasse, qui a conseillé pour le pays à faire ça à des façon qui a pas les autres. Le ministre de l'Ici, qui a des questions. Qui est-ce qui est en nous? Et en qui pays il est sorti? En qui ça est en train de Le ministre de l'Ici, qui ces clients ça veulent savent qui ont visité un pays côté ont ont trouvé une bonne protection alors sécurité est très important premier ministre chasse te dit aussi ces clients ça veulent savent si ont tombé malade ils ont ça recevoir bonne occupation et traitement alors service santé très important aussi ils veulent savent si l'on on va chasse si on les enfants yo est-ce que ça place si ça fait ça là à des institutions d'éducation qui ont même dégoué qu'on n'importe en la terre. Le Premier ministre Chasse déclaré que ces visions sont là, qui payent à un gouvernement, c'est le ni. Le Premier ministre l'a remarqué que ça c'est direction paye ni pour point pour pousser l'augmentation de l'économie pays là, pour faire système taxe paye à paye pour ces services là, sans gouvernement ni raison pour hausser le paiement taxe, parce que il y a hausse taxe qui a placé un bride en habilité pays pour continuer la compétition. On a pour le ministre là déclaré que Invest Saint Lucia a fait un joli travail pour entricher l'investissement pour le pays et particulièrement le projet qui a pris cours en Sandy Beach. Selon le ministre Chasse, le plan c'est pour acheter 20 000 carreaux propriétaires qui j'en ai de l'eau courant et système pour prendre car service plus vite. Tout ça, quand on m'a pu pu plan, à ce qu'on m'a sur le terrain, et puis à ville en pile valet. Le premier ministre a annoncé que pièce hôtel, pas qu'il bâti à ce plage, le bord de la mer, à ce plage là, mais plutôt, la a ni un chimé concrète, côté touriste, et peu de pays, quand il a visité le bord de la mer. Il a aussi ni plan pour le projet, quand il a embauché un vieux fort, choisi avec des nuits. Selon le premier ministre Chasté, c'est en façade sous le pays à toute l'occasion à Kaikouché pour investissement. Il parle de investissement pour le bateau touristique et l'aéroport international nouveau en parmi l'autre investissement en haut de fort. Ministre de la responsabilité pour la sécurité nationale et de la police, honorable Mangil Francis, qui est en ce moment hot pays Taïwan pour le passé le 27 septembre. Après y tenir yon 5 jours de visitation pour apprendre plus de sécurité et protection. Durant la visitation, cela, on nous a Francis trouvé bon bénéfice à la visitation qui était planée très sérieuse pour plusieurs institutions qui vont se faire pour faire police et sécurité pour les citoyens. Mais nous avons tenu puis assistant secrétaire par Mme Ricky Quinlan. On va mettre ce qui est là, qui on nous a Francis fait un compte et puis. C'était ambassade, vice et vice-président pour faire les étrangers. Il y a aussi une chaîne de discussion et puis ministre des Affaires et Sécurité Nationale à Taïwan et aussi directeur à l'Agence Nationale pour les Polices Taïwan. Discussion, c'était particulièrement à la sécurité des citoyens. Si officier Taïwan a expliqué que les citoyens des pays de Taïwan ont joué un rôle qui est très important en sécurité des pays, comme ils ont constamment travaillé ou apporté à ce situation crime. Si officier cette liste a aussi visité l'ambassade cette liste pour Taïwan, Edwin Laura, le ministre Francis a aussi été visité les étudiants qui ont assisté à l'université à Taïwan. Si officier a visité le bureau d'investigation et le ministre des Affaires et Justice, et le ministre a remarqué qu'il y a une différence en façon du système de justice Taïwan et cette liste qui a opéré. Mais il y a une façon façon de la sécurité nationale et un système de justice à la qui s'est laissé sa servir comme un modèle. Le Rivadez a gagné la place Castrui, qui a une facilité 
qui est trop plus avancé, là, il ouvert pour opération en mois de novembre. Le 2 octobre, les officiers des conseils de Vilcastri, ensemble avec Gwen Gwek, projet A, et chef architecte à ministre de, de plan, et aussi l'autre officier qui a engagé des projets la place là, de participer dans une consultation. Et puis les Rivandais concernant des gros travaux à ce projet pour redévelopper Gwen la place Castri. Ces Rivandais là, bienvenue, nouvelle là, qui travaillent, j'arrive à préfinissement avec plan en place pour ouvrir facilité en mois de novembre l'année ici. Facilité nouveau ça là, en Gwen la place Castri, est bien couvert et puis très confortable pour les Rivandais conduire au poisson. En facilité neuf ça là, si vous voulez là, pas qu'il ni brisé, pas au sol encore. Parce qu'il facilite ça là, ni tout ça qui est nécessaire pour vous servir pour vous pouvez facilement. Et chambre pour tenir tout pour vous, pour vous vendre la clé. Les mères pour vous le casser, Peter Saint Francis, encouragez ces rivières là pour saisir l'occasion ça là, par conséquence des dégoûts de business qui s'est apporté par vous. Facilitez nouveau ça là, en grand la place casser, bâti pour garder très joli. Et qui aussi plus fort et bien accouru pour abattre ces plus forts cyclones et l'autre tracassement des changements de climat. Et c'est comme ça nous avons trouvé nouvelle là. Je vous remercie autant pour regarder. Je vous remercie l'invitation pour jouer un peu moins encore. C'est de conserver la vie. Nous avons posé tout à l'autre. Nouvelle à quoi il y a. Après ça, je vous remercie pour cette émission. Merci au Pierre Primus. Et ici, c'est le look de ce qui se passe à nous, Weatherwise. Partly cloudy to cloudy skies with scattered showers and isolated thunderstorms over the southern portion of the Lesser Antilles. Elsewhere, fair to partly cloudy skies with a few scattered showers. Two tropical waves located over the eastern and far eastern tropical Atlantic are moving westward near 12 and 9 miles per hour or 19 and 15 kilometers per hour respectively. The tide for Castries Harbour was high at 1.40 p.m. and was low at 6.53 p.m. The tide of Yefor Bay was high at 2.47 p.m. and will be low again at 8.20 p.m. The seas, moderate to locally rough with waves and northerly to northeasterly swells 5 to 8 feet or 1.5 to 2.4 meters. Small craft operators and sea bathers are advised to exercise caution due to brisk winds and rough seas. The sun will rise Thursday at 5.54 a.m. And that brings us to the end of the NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I'm Nisha Charles. <laughs>